Please welcome in the flesh. Can you believe it? It's Mr. Brian Cranston. Cranston. How are you? I'm very good. Cranston. Wow. It's so nice to see you. I can't tell you how great it is to be able to come into a studio again and see your face. Well, it's always a thrill when you're in the building. I think that's, that's not an understatement, is it, gang? I think we... we... <laughs> now, you have had an incredibly busy last few months. You, you wrapped your show, I think, on last Tuesday. Yeah. You then had Thanksgiving. You're promoting the show now, and then there's a, there's a chance you may be picked for jury duty... Uh, I think in the next couple of weeks, well, right? Well, this is absolutely right, because I, I was able to push it off because we needed to finish our show. Yeah. So I said, OK, this is the last time. You have to give us a definitive date when you're available. And I said, January? And they said, OK, January, be there, and I might get on a jury. And what's interesting is that I play a Superior Court judge. Yeah. In, on, in, in Your Honor. In, in Your Honor. Show. Yeah. Imagine if you got picked for jury duty, and it was a, a case of a guy who's been cooking meth. Oh, so <laughs> my heart like, would go out to him. He'd be him. on the stand going, well, he knows. <laughs> I, I, I was just good at it. I didn't take it. He understands. <laughs> <laughs> now, you've had two big reunions this summer, the first with the entire Malcolm in the Middle cast and then with Aaron Paul from Breaking Bad. How did you manage to do both of these big reunions? Well, it was the first one, the, the reading of the pilot episode of Malcolm in the Middle. It's been 20 years wow. since we premiered the show. And uh, it was for a Healing California, an organization that helps veterans and homeless. And it, it drew a lot, it brought a lot of money in, and it was so great to see everybody's face again and to read those lines. It was, it was really sweet. And, and then this summer, I, um, my wife and I drove up to Idaho to reunite with Aaron Paul, because he and I are in the mezcal business. Yes, yes, you and, are. And, uh, yeah, we're doing really well. And so I had to get up there to, to do some marketing stuff and, and meet with him. So we drove straight through from Los Angeles to, to middle of Idaho. It was 14 hours, and we left when it was dark in the morning and just drove straight through. Wow. Didn't stop. Not one stop. Well, our, my car runs on urine, which is an unusual <laughs> And so we just had tubes. <laughs> it, was, it was easy for me. My wife was a little hesitant to get sure. involved. But then she pitched she's in. A, and, she's a Gatorade she's bottle girl. She's a trooper. She's a, yeah. <laughs> so now, we're guzzling the water and Gatorade. Now, let's talk about your brilliant new series, Your Honor. It, yeah. It's completely brilliant. I think this is going to be an incredibly... Uh, popular show. Uh, for anyone who doesn't know, tell them what it's about and who you play. I play a Superior Court judge in Louisiana, in New Orleans, and I have a 17-year-old son who is mourning the anniversary of his mother's death. And at that day, he decides to go and honor her, but he is also an asthmatic. He's having trouble breathing. He gets into a car accident. And he panics and leaves the scene of the accident, which immediately becomes a hit and run and it's a crime. When I get home, he tells me about it and I say, look, buddy, you got to do the right thing. We've got to take you in because you have to be responsible for your actions. So I take him into the police station. But before I turn him in, I see two grieving parents and I know the guy. He is a mob boss, a very dangerous, despicable human being. And I know that guy would kill my son. And so I do a, an about face, out the door. My son says, no, Dad, we got to, no, nope, get back in the car. Get back in the car. And so from that point on, I have to use my experience in law to, to reverse engineer all these things and become a criminal, uh, destroy evidence, create alibis, and manipulate the system. It's, it's fascinating and fun. It's so great, because from minute one, it, it's just, you're in, really. And, and it's your... This is your first lead in a TV drama since Breaking Bad. Did you purposefully wait sort of a few years to do another TV series? I did. I, I, for some reason, I thought, you know, um, Breaking Bad was such a monumental period of my life, and I thought, I need to give it at least three years before I go back and do TV. 
And um, I did. I didn't. I went and did Broadway and worked at the National, with, yeah. there, where you've worked before, and and had great experiences. And it was time to come back because of this story. It was just. It's an amazing, compelling story to tell. Now, in the show, your teenage son gets into some some terrible trouble, which made me think, what was a young Cranston like? What was the most sort of trouble a young Brian Cranston would get into? I was a, I was I was a sneaky Pete. I was a sneaky little kid. I tell you, you know, even in high school, I uh, I made sure that you know we had truant officers in those days. They right. they were like school police, and they would arrest kids at the mall and bring them in and call their parents and everything. And uh, I was skipping school like like most people and and having fun. And uh, one day when there was a school photography day or two three days. Um, I thought, there's no one monitoring this. You can just write your name down and go in. You can write any name down. So I wrote, I did Brian Cranston and took my picture and went away. And I said, uh, are you going to be here tomorrow? And I said, yeah, okay. And uh, I came back tomorrow, different shirt, came in, wrote down Bill Johnson, 11th grade. Sent it in, took the picture, got my ID card. So I had an ID card for Brian Cranston, one for Bill Johnson. And Bill Johnson... He was a terrible influence. That yes. guy, <laughs> he was a troublemaker. He always ditched school. Yes. He did really terrible, rotten, mischievous things. And I'm so glad that I disassociated with him completely. Well, we've got a picture of him right here. Oh, we have a picture here. This is Brian Cranston's student ID card. And right underneath, <laughs> Bill Johnson. And even in the face that you're pulling, <laughs> Brian Cranston is a lovely guy. Butter wouldn't melt. Bill Johnson, yeah, he knows where to get you stuff. But I was tricky, <laughs> see? Because you notice, I gave him a different grade level. I was in the 12th grade. He was in the 11th. <laughs> That's mastermind stuff. Genius. Genius. This is why you're so great at playing all these parts.